So what is RDE? RDE arose as a result of work performed by the EU Joint Research Centre, or JRC, in 2010, which showed that passenger cars emitted far more NOx on the road than they did in the laboratory test. Historically, all exhaust emissions testing has been performed in a chassis dynamometer laboratory using standard driving cycles, such as the Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicles Test Cycles, or WLTC, shown here. This provides reproducible and repeatable conditions so that the vehicle's emissions and fuel economy can be compared. However, this did not reflect emissions and fuel economy in the real world, as was confirmed by the Joint Research Centre's programme. Consequently, the EU developed the RDE test procedure. This now requires emissions measurement equipment to be installed in the car and driven on the roads. The current EU light duty legislation for testing in both chassis laboratory and on the road has evolved over a number of stages. The current directive is EU 2018-1832, which incorporated what is known as the EU WLTP Second Act and the RDE Fourth Package, resulting in the current EU 6D compliance requirements. The certification of vehicle emissions and fuel economy starts in the chassis laboratory using WLTC driving cycle. This is followed by an RDE test out on the road. The on-road data is first validated to confirm that the test trip, comprising of the route, vehicle speed and driver behaviour, conforms to the specifications of the RDE directive. The vehicle emissions are then calculated and reported as part of the type approval documentation as specified in the EU directive. The EU directive also requires the vehicle's emissions to be measured and reported while in use after introduction. The current directive requires vehicles to be tested up to 5 years old and 100,000 kilometres. The RDE trip validity is in three steps. Step A confirms that the primary requirements of the route, environmental conditions and driving speed are within the set criteria. Step B confirms that the driver behaviour conformed to the normal expectations, neither being too passive or too aggressive. Step C confirms the overall vehicle performance by using a comparison of the CO2 emissions in the RDE test to that of the CO2 emissions during the WLTC in the chassis laboratory. The trip is declared valid if all criteria are met. The test is then compared to the results from the vehicle's WLTP test cycle in the laboratory and emissions limits. Here are the specifications laid down in the directive that must be met in order to validate the RDE test in terms of test duration, temperature range, altitude, route design and driving speeds. As you can see, these are quite restrictive. An adjustment factor of 1.6 is applied should the vehicle be tested in extended temperature or altitude conditions outside of the ranges defined as moderate. It is also worth noting that market fuels must be used, not the reference fuels which are used in the chassis laboratory test. As part of the design of the test route, the altitude at the end of the test must be within 100 metres of the altitude at the beginning of the test, and the integrated altitude increase over the test must be less than 1200 metres per 100 kilometres of road. The driver behaviour and vehicle dynamics are assessed using two parameters calculated from the vehicle speed recorded over the RDE test. These are known as V times APOS and Relative Positive Acceleration, or RPA, limits for which are specified in the directive. The vehicle CO2 emissions on the RDE test are used to compare its overall performance to that of the reference WLTC performed in the chassis test cell. Using the CO2 emissions as measured in the chassis cell, categorised into urban, rural and motorway equivalent values, the vehicle's RDE CO2 emissions are compared using the Moving Average Window method, or MAW and must conform within specified limits to show that the vehicle was not tested or driven abnormally. These limits are different, however, for hybrid vehicles. 
The emissions from the vehicle are calculated according to the directive, but the final reported values can be adjusted if the CO2 emissions were significantly higher than the CO2 emissions measured on the WLTC in the chassis laboratory, indicating that the vehicle was tested under adverse conditions such as a headwind or at a higher than normal load. The two factors used for the calculation of the reduction are defined in the directive and may change in future revisions of the legislation. The calculation of emissions from hybrid vehicles are also defined and applied at this stage. Once the RDE results have been calculated and reported for both the total trip and the urban phase, then they are compared to the mandatory limit and also the value stated by the vehicle manufacturer in its Certificate of Conformity for the vehicle. An allowance is made to the RDE results because of the higher uncertainty of the PEMS equipment and measurement method in comparison to that used in the chassis laboratory test. The current conformity factor for NOx is 1 plus 0.43. The 0.43 is the uncertainty factor of the PEMS. For particle number, the conformity factor is 1 plus 0.5. The RDE test concept may have been developed by the EU, but it is being adopted by many other countries, such as China, Japan, Korea and India, over a variety of timescales and vehicle applicability. Most of these countries' legislations are based on the EU directives, but a Global Technical Regulation, or GTR, for RDE testing has just been tabled at the United Nations in Geneva and this is likely to become the template for global RDE testing regulations in the future. RDE testing has been proven to have significantly reduced the real-world emissions of light-duty vehicles since its introduction. The EU has already indicated that RDE will be the continuing platform for further emissions extensions and reductions. These are likely to include the extension of the boundary conditions, such as temperature and altitude, the change of PN to count solid particles above 10 nanometer compared to above 23 nanometer at present. Additional components such as ammonia and nitrous oxide may be specified. So-called special operation RDE may be added to include driving behavior currently not included in the RDE test parameters. The continuing reduction of the CF values for RDE equipment and test uncertainty, NOx reducing to 1 plus 0.32 in future EU legislation. And whilst never likely to be part of an RDE test on the road, the EU is considering to introduce legislation to monitor and restrict the emissions of particles from vehicle braking systems, for which a test and measurement system is already available from Hariba. With the world leader in emissions measurement by your side, you can be sure to be kept up to speed in respect to the evolving real driving emissions for all light duty vehicle types. If you would like to learn more about how current or future RDE regulations may affect your light duty engine or vehicle designs, or if you'd like to discuss how Hariba may be able to support you through your R&D or testing, please get in contact. Thank you.